Welcome back to News and Views. Time for us now to get the gloves on. Paul Upham has joined us uh, here in the studio to talk about all the events in boxing. Of course, a, a very uh, big fight this weekend for Manny Pacquiao. We'll get to that very shortly. Before we do that, Paul, welcome to the studio. Uh, I guess, uh, first up though, the speculation about Danny Green has now ended. Well, we didn't know what Danny was going to do and he's come out today and announced he's going to fight again. He's going to fight in July in Perth against an American, Danny Santiago. Two important points. One, he's going to go down in weight to light heavyweight. That means he's going to have to lose about four or five kilos. He was up at uh, cruiserweight in his last few bouts. And the second thing, he's 39 years of age. He's lost his last two fights by knockout. Should Danny Green be fighting again? Now, we love to see Danny in the ring, but we don't want to see him get hurt. And at his best, he easily beats Santiago. But the question is now, is he at his best anymore? Well, that's the case with Santiago as well. He's a 39-year-old. He's uh, had a shot at the title, I think, three times and has been unsuccessful. Um, uh, we, we often don't know whether these guys are champs or chumps. What, what category would you put Santiago in? Look, he, he was a challenger. He certainly was never a world champion. As I said, at his best, Danny Green beats him easily. But we've got to see what sort of condition is Danny in. Coming off those two knockout losses, moving down in weight... History has shown us that when these fighters go up and come back down, they lose some muscle as well, and it does affect them as fighters. So there's a, certainly some question marks here at Danny Green, who is 39 years of age. Mm. Well, I guess the fight everyone's looking forward to seeing now that Danny Green is alive and still going is Danny Green against Mundine. Mundine, of course, has got himself a fight uh, in Vegas on July 14 against uh, Bronco McCart. Don't know a whole lot about him, but uh, Danny Green, as to fighting Mundine, he thinks he can smoke the man out of his hole. This fight's here to prove that I'm, I'm prepared to come down and give the fans of Australia what they want to see. And it's also what Anthony Mundine's called. So I'm not sure whether he's just calling my name out just to get publicity or he's, real, he's, he's dinking about getting the fight on. This is, uh, this is my wife saying, I'm dinking. You've called it again. You're going the other way once again. So I'm, in a way, smoking him out of his hole. As far as I don't like him goes, I'm not a fan of his. And I think what he says, I think he's, he's deluded in what he says, and I think he actually believes what he says. I think that's crazy. And uh, I want to prove that what, a, what happened in 2006, um, you know, I want to prove that that was nowhere near the best aid offer. He got me as a ghost, and he still couldn't knock me out, but still was somewhere closer to my weight division. Delusional's uh, talking tough, but when you consider Mundine has called out the likes of Floyd Mayweather, I mean, maybe it's justified. But uh, Bronco McCart, is, is it a simple fact that if Mundine beats McCart, his first fight in the USA, green will never happen because now then he would have his ticket to the US, you would think? Well, it gives him some options. He's got to win. McCart's a former junior middleweight world champion. He's 41. It's not a tough fight for Anthony, but the important fight is he is fighting America. He's never done it before. And the former Costa Zoo promoter, Vlad Wharton, has actually set this up in Las Vegas for Anthony. Big opportunity to get out there. He's going to fight on the small network, Wealth TV. If he wins, it gives him some opportunities, but still... Is the Mundine Green rematch in demand? I know there's a lot of people who would love to see it a few years ago, but is it going to generate the sort of money that these guys are going to want? Mundine's going to demand a certain amount of money. Can the gate and the pay-per-view sales sustain that money for Green and Mundine? I think it's a big question mark whether it happens. I think Mundine had the chance to fight Danny Green a couple of years ago. Danny was retired, remember, and he called him out. Danny came back. So I think there's a big question mark if that fight happens again, mm. that rematch. Yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? So many fights, I guess, aren't made because of uh, the golden dollar, the $200 million fight that we'd all love to see between Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather. It appears that'll never happen now. Floyd Mayweather, we'll talk about him. He's already he's in the clink for a few months. Pacquiao, though, this Sunday takes on Tim Bradley. Uh, this guy can fight. What, uh, what's his record? 28 and 0. Can you tell us more about Bradley apart from the ironing board stomach? Two-time world champion, undefeated, never been beaten, 28 years of age. Pacquiao's 33 yeah. now. The question mark, is Pacquiao starting to slow down a bit? Uh, Bradley, phenomenal physical condition, the best abdominals in the boxing game. That doesn't win your fights, but he's never lost before. He's very busy. He's got a great work rate. He's going to make Manny Pacquiao work. The only question mark is Bradley's been down a couple of times. He, he's never lost before, and can he take those Pacquiao thunderbolts? But... Uh, if Pacquiao is not at his best, Bradley's a very, very good uh, contender. We saw uh, Floyd Mayweather uh, so brilliant defensively uh, where you've got a, a fighter like Pacquiao who's really throwing them at the rate of knots. Um, what sort of style 
is he going to, I guess, use to combat? Oh, you, you say that he throws a lot of punches, Bradley, but maybe a counter-punching technique could be his way to maybe tire out Manny Pacquiao. He won't want to leave himself open uh, like Ricky Hatton did. We saw what happened. He was absolutely flattened by Manny Pacquiao. He's got a lot of pa pace in his punches, a lot of speed, a lot of movement, but the question is, 33, is he starting to slow down? Now, Bradley's going to try and push him that distance. He wants to go the 12 rounds. He's not going to knock Manny Pacquiao out. Mm. He's going to win on points, throw a lot of punches, give him angles, try and counter-punch, as you say, and let's see what Manny Pacquiao's got left because the, the last couple of fights he's won, but the question marks have been out there. Mm. Well, Tim Bradley with a 28-0 record, I guess he's got plenty of reason to be confident. I think at the end of the night, I think I'm going to win. I just period. Like, just every, every other fight I've always said, I'm going to win the fight. You know, and it's, it's come true. true. Same thing. You know, I, I'm expecting, I want to I wanna knock out. Absolutely. And I want to put this guy on the canvas. Some way, somehow. I mean, it's been a couple of, couple of fights. He hasn't been down in a very long time. So I want to be the first guy to put him down. Yeah, there he is. Uh... Oh, but they all talk a good game, don't they? I guess we'll, we'll find out when it, when, it, when it comes. Hey, uh, we'll talk about that fight and when people can see it in just a bit. Before we do, uh, Sugar Shane calls it a day. Uh, he's never been knocked out. How will he best be remembered, do you think? Look, Sugar Shane Mosley will be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, a lot of people remember him for those two great wins over Oscar De La Hoya when Oscar De La Hoya was at his best. Of course, he totally destroyed Shannon Taylor. And he was at one stage the pound-for-pound pound number one fighter in the world. Great guy outside the ring. Uh, you know, won multiple weight uh, world titles in three weight classes. And as I said, he'll go into the Canister Boxing Hall of Fame one day. And, uh, you know, probably didn't rise up to the, the Sugar Ray Robinson or Sugar Ray Leonard levels, but he was still a very special fighter in his prime. And there's your pound for pound rankings. Uh, it's hard to argue with uh, Floyd Mayweather, particularly with what we saw him do recently. It's hard to believe that he's possibly getting better. Well, he's never, still never lost, and that defensive skills, that's what would make it hard for Pacquiao in a fight now. But at the moment, he's in prison. He, he, he's locked up for three months, and he's got to get out of there. Uh, but as you said, Chris, you know, the, the concerns of their, that fight with Pacquiao is not going to happen because they can't seem to agree on the money and, and uh, everything else. Even though Pacquiao has come out and said he will take the Olympic standard drug testings, it's looking, it's looking that it's, uh, it may not happen, but this should be a, a belter of a fight. Pacquiao v Bradley. You can see it live Sunday at 11 a.m. That's Eastern Standard Time on Fox Sports' main event. It's a huge fight, sadly, for Floyd Mayweather. He is in the clink, um, and they don't have uh, satellite or cable. He won't be able to watch it. Um, it's going to be an interesting time for him in there. In the, in the joint, isn't hey, it? If Pacquiao loses, a $200 million fight goes down the drain and Mayweather had plenty of chances to make it. So, you know, let's just see what happens. But Pacquiao, Bradley, it's one not to miss. It's going to be a great fight. We need to mention uh, Daniel Gill, who's really captured the attention of this nation uh, and really the world of late. He's taken on an opponent, uh, Felix Stern, and uh, a lot of people... Um, may not know that name but by gee you look at his credentials this guy is a serious boxer he is a great world champion he's been very very impressive pushed the great oscar de la hoya in las vegas and was robbed on the cards current wba world champion unification bout ibf title versus wba daniel's so confident he's going back to germany where he first won the world title and i'm telling you now he's going to win on points Daniel Gill is in his prime now. Uh, he's going to beat Sturm. Sturm's just on the way out. Gill's going to show him so many angles, so many skills, and so many punches that Sturm won't be able to get out of the ring with the winner. Gill's going to win on points. That's September, and I'm predicting it now already. That's how confident I am in Daniel Gill. Gee, I hope okay. you're right, Paul. Danny, of course, has defended his title twice in Tasmania, but Sturm has defended it 14 times successfully in Germany. Mm. Uh, we're all sort of, I'm sure, in Danny Gill's corner, so fingers crossed that uh, he'll come out on top in that one. Plenty more still to come here on uh, Fox Sports News and Views, including we've got more from New South Wales Blues Ball. And uh, how are the Socceroos dealing with the Middle East heat? Um, you know, hopefully get the right result.